Hello, and welcome to the Distracted Driving webinar presented by InterWest Insurance Services Risk Control Department. In this presentation, we will define what distracted driving really is and analyze common distractions many drivers encounter on any given day. Reveal the truth about distracted driving, as well as dispel myths about why drivers continue to drive distracted. And finally, we will propose a layered strategy to help you drive distraction-free. Let's get started by first discussing what it really means to drive distracted. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration defines a driving distraction as any activity that can divert a person's attention away from the primary task of driving the vehicle safely. All distractions endanger driver, passenger, and bystander safety. Distractions can be broken up into three main subgroups. Manual, which are any distractions that take your hands off of the wheel. Visual, distractions that cause you to take your eyes off of the road. And lastly, cognitive distractions. These include any distraction that can take your mind off of the primary task of operating the vehicle safely. Distractions can affect, affect drivers differently, but here are just a few observable ways that you can tell if you are driving distracted. First, a higher deviation of speed, meaning fluctuations, either faster or slower, away from the speed you are trying to safely maintain. Next, unintentional lane changes or busts are more common while driving distracted and don't just occur while attempting to negotiate a turn. Delayed reaction times, which are equivalent to a driver who is under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Improper scanning of intersections. This symptom could include failing to notice that an intersection has controls or failing to determine whether you have the right of way. Lastly, the lower detection of objects in peripheral vision, which is a phenomenon referred to as inattentional blindness. Inattentional blindness can occur when you are trying to focus on more tasks than your brain has the ability to handle. When this occurs, your brain will essentially ignore events unfolding in your vision, which may include a potentially serious hazard. Let us briefly discuss some common distractions most drivers encounter. As you will notice, distractions do not always fit neatly into just one of the categories discussed earlier. Passengers are a good example of a visual and cognitive distraction. For drivers traveling with children and infants, this distraction increases four to eight times over driving with an adult passenger. Reaching for an object can be a combination of manual and visual distractions. This can be as innocent as looking for a water bottle that is rolled under a seat or feeling around the footwell for directions to your destination. Insects in the vehicle can pose a serious visual and cognitive distraction as you attempt to shoo the fly or spider out of the window that you have rolled down to get it out of the vehicle. Eating and drinking pose an often overlooked manual distraction that can cross individual as you attempt to keep crumbs and condiments off of your clothing or try to locate that last french fry at the bottom of the bag. In-vehicle entertainment systems may have gone hands-free in recent years, but if your catalog of music is so wide that you have to shuffle through artists and albums manually, you're going to find yourself taking your hands off of the wheel, the, off of the wheel and eyes off of the road. Navigation systems, which are often tied to a cell phone or other handheld device, present a number of visual and manual distractions, not to mention the cognitive stress caused if the guidance decides to change courses too quickly to give you time to change lanes or exit the highway safely. Vehicle diagnostics are an often overlooked item that can cause visual distraction if they are out of the ordinary, such as a TPMS or check engine warning light. They are oftentimes communicated with a symbol, like a swerving car or an oil can, that are not familiar to all drivers. External distractions are typically visual and include common sites like construction or road work, advertising signs, pedestrians, or even other vehicles. Lastly, cell phones, which present a combination of all three categories with calls, texting, social media, and other apps that we as a society can't seem to keep our attention away from. Let's look into some facts about distracted driving, starting with the hard statistics on how this hazard is affecting our roadways. The California Office of Traffic Safety estimates that 80% of total crashes are due to driver distraction. This number has increased since 2014 as fuel prices have dropped and the economy has improved. These two factors together mean that more people are on the road and driving more miles than earlier in the decade. 
Passengers and non-occupants account for almost 40% of deaths due to distracted driving, meaning that just about half of all victims of the epidemic were completely innocent. There is one distraction-related crash in the U.S. every 30 seconds on average. That's almost 3,000 every single day. For the next couple of slides, let's dig a little deeper into cell phone use and texting. In 2014, cell phone use was reported in 13% of fatal distraction-affected crashes, which was up from 9% in 2010. This is likely an underreported statistic because the drivers and passengers in the crash may have died or were unable to remember the events immediately prior to the crash, which is common in serious collisions. 4.3% of drivers are holding a device up to their ears at any given moment. That's almost 600,000 vehicles. 92% of drivers, which is almost all of us, in a government study have made or received calls while driving their vehicles. Furthermore, almost half of adults surveyed have been passengers in a vehicle driven by a driver having a conversation on their phone. It has sadly become just that commonplace. Now, on to texting. Almost 172 billion text messages are sent every month in this country alone. The average text takes 4.6 seconds to complete. If you're traveling at 55 miles per hour in 4.6 seconds, you would cover just over the length of a football field, including end zones, without knowing what had just occurred around your vehicle. 97% of drivers, the overwhelming majority, feel that texting while driving is dangerous, but almost half admit to doing it anyways. We'll discuss why in just a moment. Lastly, you are 23 times more likely to crash your vehicle while texting than not. Those are not good odds by any measure. So, we just discovered that most people think just driving distracted is dangerous, and yet they choose to do it anyways. Why is that? The National Safety Council recently published a paper titled The Multitasking Lie. In this paper, a number of myths about drivers' perceptions about their own distracted driving habits were debunked. Here are some of those myths. Myth number one, drivers can multitask. The refrain heard from many drivers is that they can walk and chew gum at the same time. The problem with that logic is that walking and chewing gum are thinking and non-thinking tasks. They take up different real estate in the brain. Meanwhile, driving and holding a conversation on a cell phone are both thinking tasks, and focusing on both is impossible without compromising some brain function. Myth number two, talking to someone on a cell phone is no different than talking to a passenger inside the vehicle. Again, not true. If a sudden hazard appears on the road, it is almost assured that a passenger inside the vehicle will stop speaking and react. A person on the other end of a phone call will be unaware and continue talking as if nothing happened at all. Myth number three, hands-free devices eliminate the dangers of cell phone use while driving. This assumption, though usually well-meaning, is false. Numerous studies have proven that the main source of distraction is the conversation, not the phone in your hand. The reason is that while conversing, activity in your brain's parietal lobe, which processes visual stimulation, decreases by almost 40%. Myth number four, and really it's a poor excuse, is that all drivers on cell phones are safer than drunk drivers. This may have been true statistically at one time, but in reality, simulator studies have shown that drivers manipulating cell phones drive more recklessly than drivers with a .08 blood alcohol content. So what can we do to prevent ourselves and others from driving distracted? This diagram is called the Hierarchy of Controls Pyramid. From top to bottom, it represents the most to least effective methods of reducing hazards. We'll use it to determine how to reduce hazardous behavior while driving. The top layer, elimination, physically removes the hazard. In the case of distracted driving, this would mean removing causes of distraction from the vehicle or the vehicle itself. This may be impractical for distractions like things going on outside the vehicle, but for items like food and cell phones, this is an easy and practical solution. The next step down is substitution, which replaces a hazard with something else. In this case, that hazard could be driving the vehicle. This may be the easiest approach and would mean pulling off of the road to stop and change destinations on your GPS, send a text or email, or grab a quick bite to eat. Under that are engineering controls, which are physical barriers to the hazard. This can include apps that automatically respond to text and phone calls and securing loose objects inside of the vehicle. Next, we have administrative controls, which are those that change the way people work with the hazard. 
These are most commonly things like company policies banning cell phone use, hands-free laws, and fines designed to persuade you from engaging in the hazard. Lastly, we have personal protective equipment. PPE is a last resort where a level of risk has been accepted and now the only option is to reduce injury. In this case, a seat belt and airbags are all that we're left with. Thank you for viewing. I hope to have given you a few takeaways that you can use to improve your safety and the safety of others. For further safety and risk management resources, please visit us at iwins.com. Have a safe day.